I guess you don't get to go to Bible study, but you just have to walk around with your I know, well, it's just part of the deal. Like, you can walk around with yourself. We can do that now. All right, so uh, I'm sure we'll have a few more stragglers here in a minute. We're not, we're not going to do a full class because of the meeting. Um, so whenever the kids get here, we'll be done. But that way we can do a little bit of next week, this week. How's that? Sounds good. All right, a little bit of this one. This one. This one. What happened to Eileen? Well, I thought you were going to have the meeting again. What happened to Eileen? What happened to Eileen? What happened to Eileen? Is she over here? She's over here. Let's go. She's not happy. Well, after us. Am I going to have Steve or Okay. Hi, Dorothy. What do you see? All right. Twenty-six. Twenty-two. Do you want to play with the sheets? I can like to play with the sheets. If that makes you happy, it makes me happy. Twenty-six. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. If you're not happy, I'm not happy? Yeah, that's right. No, no, the other way. Oh. If I'm not happy, you're not happy? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, if mom's not happy, nobody's happy. That's true. <laughs> this, this is especially true. Uh, I think we talked about this. Oh, yeah, it was when I was called here. I remember talking to Dale about it. I was like, we're working out the housing thing. And they, they, it was kind of like, if Pastor's wife isn't happy, Pastor won't be happy. <laughs> so we're going to work out something different. And that worked out all right. It all actually, no touch. I see what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good. Uh, so last week we talked about, well, two weeks ago we talked about the law and the prophets and the Psalms. Uh, last week we talked about the law in particular, remember? Um, and all this actually worked out really well considering what we heard today. Which I'd already planned, right? That we hear the law and the prophets represented it, and then fulfilled in Jesus, right? Remember that today? All right, good. So uh, we talked law last week, that's Moses. Torah, remember? I said a few times in the sermon just for you, because you were listening, you know. Hopefully everybody else catched on. What were we talking about? We were talking about the Torah. Um, we need to talk about the prophets. The prophets, the prophets. We've heard. Uh, in the daily prayer, we've been hearing about a couple of prophets. We have well, two of the big, or well, four of them actually so far, I think, this year, haven't we? We had Elijah, and then we had Elisha, right? And then we met Isaiah, because he was under a preach to uh, Ahaz, right? We had a little bit of on Isaiah. Was that about two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Yeah. Well, yeah. And then uh, now we, right now, we've got Jeremiah. So we had Jeremiah introduced to us last week, and then we'll, we'll hear about Jeremiah's fun times as a prophet this week. Yeah. So I said in the sermon that, that uh, the disciples fell on their faces, those three, in fear because they remembered what happened to Jeremiah as part of it. Yeah. How he was thrown into prison, then he was thrown into a cistern. Yeah. That's how much people liked hearing what he had to say. So we'll hear about that this week. Um, all right, so do we, who do we miss? We some other, we've got some other prophets? Prophets. It's kind of the like Old Testament word for people who speak God's word. All right, go through books of the Bible and see if you can find some other prophets. Wait. What? That's a word, right? That's a sex, that's a word. It's not like the God. Joshua, not proper. Judges, Ruth, the sex samples, and the chronicles. And now, uh, we're getting closer. No? Ezra, Nehemiah. Those are not prophets yet. You're so quiet. How about Ezekiel? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Daniel. Yeah? Uh, those people are thinking major prophets here. Who are the major? Isaiah, Jeremiah. No. No. Not a prophet. Ezekiel, Daniel. Jonah. Uh, Lamentations is included in the books of the major prophets. Right, so that, who wrote Lamentations? Anybody know? You should probably read it more often. We don't. We, it's actually a thesis of uh, myself and then 
I think I'm Pastor Riley's here on our podcast, and I've been on that pit too, and has been for years. What's this all about? I think it is. That, that we don't know how to lament anymore. We don't know how to complain to God. We don't complain to God. We keep it to ourselves. It's like this where's a place to put your complaints? Keep them in your head. I saw a chart where they tracked uh, uh, inflation, uh, economic inflation, to the use of antidepressants. <laughs> and it correlates almost one for one. As the cost of living increases, so does the use of antidepressants. What does that mean? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so we don't complain. The drugs aren't going to help. The inflation keeps going up. Yeah. So, uh, okay, minor profits. Those are considered the major profits. And there's minor profits. Let's see if you can come up with any of those. There goes the end of the Old Testament. Yeah, I got it. Good. I mean, you just do the end. They're, they're in the book of the prophets. The book, it's called the book of the 12. So there's 12 in a row. Hosea. Say it. Who comes next? Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Look at the 12. Learn something new every day. Huh? All right, good. So those are the prophets. So basically there's 15, 14, or 16 if you count lamentation. Got it? So that's introduction on prophets. Uh, what we like we heard today in the sermon, we uh, need to know how to listen to them today now that Christ has come. It's easy to read them as historic figures who are prophesying to their particular time and place. And then we can even look to the historic record and see how their prophecy is fulfilled, right? So, Jeremiah's going to prof- prophesy the destruction of Jerusalem. It even happens in his lifetime. So, we'll see that all this week. Hi, Owen. Hi. Okay. Alright, so let's look at Acts chapter 3. Alright? Give you an example of this. This may not have been what you thought we'd read, but we'll see. Right, so this is after Jesus' ascension into heaven. Sorry. I know that's not Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Fine. Chapter 3. Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, which would be 3. three yep. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. That sounds familiar. Right? Look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Psych. <laughs> no. Silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. Sorry, that was a really dated reference. Remember when they used to say that? That's an English thing. They still say that? Okay. Thanks, All right. Um, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I don't have silver and gold. Right? Think of the second article of the creed. He saved us not with gold or silver. No, Dorothy. No, no, no. He saved us not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood. And his innocent suffering and God. Right? Same thing here. We don't have silver and gold, but I do have Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet, his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. They knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened. Now, check this out. As the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's. Greatly amazed. Solomon's portico, sometimes you hear it, right? So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, 
Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us, as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and kill the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, and which we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of his, all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that, you may, that he may send Jesus Christ, who has preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of the restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets, there it is again, since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord God, your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren, him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear the prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel, oh, we didn't include Samuel. All right. Peter thinks he's a prophet. And those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days. You are sons of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first God, having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you, and turning away every one of you from your iniquities. All right. So we have the healing of the lame man. Isn't this a lovely text? Right? And notice what he says. He, Peter said, I told you, uh, look at us. But why does Peter want the layman to look at them? This is the same thing I have to do in school all the time now. Uh, I have to do it in various ways. The way the teachers do it is they say, class, class, and then they, I hope they have some response. You get their attention. Yeah, right. Class, class, teacher, teacher. I don't know what they say. Something like that. Okay. Yeah, so he's saying, because it's there's hustle, bustle, there's things going on. He's like, Listen. Look at us, meaning, you know, you look, you listen with your eyes. Yeah. You, if you're not, like, looking at the pastor, you don't really probably hear him all that well. I don't know if you've experienced that. If you look at the sound, you tend to pay attention to the other sound. But the kid's playing, you look at the kid, you won't hear. People think they can multitask. <laughs> Well, definitely men can. That's absolutely true. Um, and women, I, you you have to multitask. I should I should qualify. It. You can multitask. You just don't do it very well. Right. Men can't at all. Men can't at all. Certainly. Yeah, yeah. Right. And she does. And, and at some point, she just throws her hands and hides in the back. All right. It's true. And lock the door, that's right. All right, in whose name does Peter heal the lame man? Yeah, so it's not that Peter is trying to draw attention to himself. He's trying to draw attention to the word that he's been given to speak, right? So in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk, right? So the sign is connected to the word or the name here. That sounds familiar. A name connected to a visible sign. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah, God's name is attached to the water there. Here it's attached to the word Peter. All right. Peter talks about God as the God of, uh, we have to go to the next part in the sermon. There it is, verse 13. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? And that's uh, what he's saying is he's the God, he's the God who was promised. Or the God who promised, I should say. And the God who has promised, right? Jesus. So he made his promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right? So this is this is pointing to the promise of salvation in the offspring, right? Alright. Uh what else? He's the God of who else? After Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our 
Fathers. Fathers, okay? Now, I know you're being told by our entire culture that patriarchies are bad. You ever heard of this? Yeah. Dirty off the patriarchy. All right. The way that God instituted the faith to be transmitted is by the way of fathers. Even in our catechism, we change the language. As the head of the household, right? Have you noticed that? Let's have that in Hades. Right? And it's, there is a reality that often, you know, homes are broken and there isn't a father. Sometimes the father's delinquent and the mom picks up where the father is delinquent and doesn't do the job. But, as far as the Bible is concerned, from Adam all the way through to when Jesus comes and the Christian church, it's a patriarchy. Why? Because God is father. So even if, even if there's broken and confused patriarchies in our own, and the faith isn't being transmitted necessarily that way, thanks be to God, you know, that he'll work, he'll work the faith out even where we fail. Yet, the picture of Christ and his church is under, a, under the Father, right? So it's a patriarchy, and it's handed down from Father to Son, etc. That's also especially true of the promise made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, I think we don't like patriarchies because we don't like... We think that I'm not evil or something. I don't. And it's hard for me to speak because I'm a white Protestant male, so I'm kind of like the worst person to talk about this ever. So if there's people, there's probably better. Maybe I don't know. I need I need to be a minority and female. Female. There are some there are some uh, female theologians that are pretty good at, at talking about this, but pretty rare. Pretty rare. It's kind of female theologian often means female pastor, which means I've already denied what the Bible says it's only female headship of the church. So. Anyway, all right, so we have our fathers. Uh, Jesus is called what in that verse? The father's servant. Servant, all right. Now, can you think of an Old Testament text that, that also uh, prophesies Jesus as servant? It's even called the Suffering Servant Song. It's in, there, are some, there, there are some suggestive songs I'm thinking of from Isaiah, the famous one, here um, at uh, the Friday, right? During Holy Week. Here, I'll, I'll jump to it. 52, 53. Yeah. Behold, my servant shall heal prudently. My servant. There it is. He shall be exalted and extolled and very high. But you think, oh, he's going to be so impressive. But you know what that actually means. It's, it's his crucifixion. Right? Exalted. The exaltation of Jesus is at his crucifixion. I know, it's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? Yeah, it's not what you expect. Not what you expect. Uh, just as many were astonished at you, so his visage, nice French word, was marred more than any man. See? Beaten, bruised, stricken, smitten, and afflicted. We haven't gotten to that yet. And is formed more than the sons of men, so he'll sprinkle many nations right, with, his, with his blood. Um, I can read more of it. It just keeps going. It keeps going. Despised, rejected by man, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows. There it is. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. You've heard this before. But notice how it started. Behold my servant. Yeah. So, so that's this is the we've talked about this a lot. When you read the New Testament, there's lots of shorthand. There's, it's almost like code language. Like they, they just say my servant, and you're supposed to have known. Oh yeah, Isaiah 52, 53. You know, I remember Isaiah. But they didn't have passages like that. It was just the whole story. So you just remember Isaiah. Well, they remember parts of it. Maybe not by the verse number. We added chapters and verses because we're lazy. Okay. Um, Peter tells the people why they killed the Prince of Life. Why did they do it? Out of ignorance. Yeah, out of ignorance. Meaning, were they ignorant of God's word? Not exactly, right? They knew the Old Testament prophecy. They were looking for a Messiah. I mean, what would they say? Hosanna the highest, blessed is he who comes in his word. I mean, they welcomed him as a Messiah king on Palm Sunday. So what was the problem? What's the ignorance they had? I would suggest it's exactly what Jesus was doing on the mountain today, Moses and Elijah. I, I could have said this, but I didn't get too off the path. He was, Jesus was telling Moses and Elijah what he was about to do with 
fulfill the word they had spoken. They had spoken it in ignorance too, by the Holy Spirit. They didn't understand how it would be fulfilled. They only spoke as God had given them to speak, right? We heard that from St. Peter. So Jesus is saying, I'm going to go, Exodus, to Jerusalem, I'm going to die for the sins of the world, to fulfill the word that you spoke. Right? So that they know too. Isn't that interesting? It's an interesting idea. That's speculative. That's the reason they put it in the sin. He doesn't say what he's saying, except for that Exodus bit. He does say, so I can run with that. Yes, Dorothy. Um, now, here, here's to our point today when we're talking about prophets. And, uh, isn't that a, well, before we do that, isn't that a pretty intense little beginning of the sermon? Yeah, you killed, you killed the one who came to save you. You can turn the knife a little bit, right? Yeah, he does that at, he does that at Pentecost as well. Um, you see, this, this is actually the sermon that's the whole book of Acts. Every time they preach, this is what they preach. Jesus came for you and you didn't want him. And he died for you anyway. Which is really actually good news. <laughs> because we never really want him. Uh, you deny the Holy One and just. You ask for a murder to be granted to you. You kill the Prince of Life and God raised from the dead. Of which we are witnesses. Alright, so. Oh, there's the ignorance, right? I know that you did it in ignorance as the rulers. But there's the key in verse 18. Those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his holy prophets. So again, remember we talked about last week the road to Emmaus, where Jesus opened up the scriptures so that they would see him in all of them, right? Here's another way of saying kind of the same idea. It's like when you go and read the prophetic word, ask yourself, how is this telling us what Jesus did, especially on Good Friday, right? Did we look at Pentecost last week? Is that what we did? Yeah, we did something else. Right? If you look at Pentecost, I quoted it in the sermon today. Um, here is this really astounding thing where he 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 draws from a prophecy of Joel, where the where the sun was turned to darkness and the moon was turned to blood on the day, the awesome day of the Lord. And he quotes that as being fulfilled on Good Friday. Which the accounts of Good Friday don't describe the moon being turned to blood, just that the sun was darkened. But it actually kind of follows, because when you have a solar eclipse and the moon is risen, then the moon ends up being red. The blood red moon. I don't know if you know that. So, so I can say that it happened on Good Friday because Daniel said it happened, even though the Gospels don't actually account for it. But Peter did. Peter said that that was the scripture. Anyway. Dorothy. Now you don't want to be here. I get it. All right, uh, let's see. So, by the mouth of all his holy prophets. What does Peter tell the people to do then in verse 19? Right. I heard this in the sermon as well. Repent. Yeah, repent, therefore. You're not ignorant anymore. Right? Yeah, no excuses. <laughs> Got no excuses. I like how you said that. Yeah. Repent, therefore, and be converted. Right? Conversion. We always preach for conversion. And, and that is a... Um, it's, it's not convert, it's be converted. Ah, Gabriel knows his grammar. Explain. It's done to them. Right, it's fastened. Be converted, it's done to you. That's God converts you. He's been doing that by this preaching. Right? He's been converting them, changing their hearts. Uh, repentance can be understood that way. It's not passive, grammatically though. That your sins may be blotted out, and so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. For it is a sins, right? Isn't yeah, that beautiful? Huh. Heaven would receive Jesus until the restoration of all things. All right. so that's what he says next. So he's ascended into heaven uh, until the restoration of all things. The new heavens, the new earth, the new Eden, you heard at the end of the sermon. Uh, but notice again, he says, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Right? Now, he's saying this in the context of having just healed. The lame man. What happened to the lame man? What did he do after he was healed? He leaped like a deer. Ah, Gabriel says he did leap like a deer. Does that sound familiar? Walking, leaping, and praising God. He says yes. What, who is it? The blind. Yeah, the blind will see. The lame will leap like deer. You know it. You know it. You know it comes from somewhere. But where? But where? If I click this little button, it will come. Da, 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 da. 
Isaiah 35, 6. The lamb, then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing, the waters will burst forth in the wilderness of streams. See? So he's saying what you just experienced is the fulfillment of what Isaiah foretold. Right? This is what Jesus comes to bring. Right? I think we think of God a little too little today. A little too little? We think of him too small. Like the things he did for the apostles. Like, well, this is how it's usually said by our people. Those were limited gifts given only to the apostolic era as proof that their testimony was from God. Right? But then the later generations aren't given to heal and to resurrect the dead and all this kind of stuff. Except the histories actually say the disciples of the disciples, the disciples of the disciples of the disciples, they still were doing some of the same things. So, yeah, maybe we don't believe that God actually would heal. Or, and especially like this, right? A lame man. I don't have some miracles. Sorry, I one. I, my mom loves it when I mention her in front of us. I'll mention her. <laughs> you're not supposed to talk about your family, but oh well. She likes it. But, I mean, bizarre thing, she doesn't talk about it very much. Um, but she had stage four cancer through her whole life. Insane, right? But um, she did do some things before the surgery. And uh, she still had the surgery, but mm, there was, I don't know, she'll tell me, she'll correct me later, but the cancer wasn't there before they did the operation. They still did the operation because it was an appendix rupture, a cancerous appendix rupture. So when your appendix ruptures with cancer, it just puts cancer everywhere. Yeah, that's really crazy. Yeah. So she still had the, it's called the mother of all surgeries, which is kind of fitting, right? Um, but yeah, it was a weird thing. She did a few things. You know, she changed her pH level, baking soda water or something like that. Maybe more lemon juice, I don't know. But it was there and then it wasn't. We were we praying. I don't know. Right? You pray to God. That's what we should say. Well, All right. Like years ago, I don't know if you remember Randy Klein. Yes. It's just saying it. Yeah. Um, Tell me more. He raised tons of money for him, all over the company. Yeah. Yeah. Over $100,000. For the surgery. For the surgery. Yeah. And he well, was paying for the surgery. He didn't have any problem. He was he was him. That is. Yeah. It's, it was bizarre. It was bizarre or amazing. Yeah. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Yeah. And he was a young man. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I think we need to learn to pray that way. Uh, verse 22. For Moses truly said to our fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things whatever he says to you. All right. So, uh, what is he saying then about Jesus in regards to his relationship to the prophets? Uh, a prophet like me, right? Actually, just like him, because he's his own son, right? Father's son. And you shall hear in all things what I'm going to say to you. What you hear today from the mountain. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to you. Listen to him. Right, the same thing. And then notice it's different than the other prophets. It shall be that whatever or that every soul who will not hear that prophet, Jesus, shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. There's salvation in no one else. There's no other name under heaven by which you may be saved. Um, it's one thing to reject Isaiah or Jeremiah. I mean, that's still rejecting God's word. It's another thing to reject the one whom God has sent to save you from your sins. If you reject him, there's no salvation. Yeah. So you notice there's a little bit of a compare and contrast. It's funny how Jesus deflects the question, are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? And he kind of like doesn't quite answer it. Right? Is he a prophet like those who came before him? Actually, no. But is he the prophet who is, who is to come? Or is it John? Or is it Jesus? Yeah, it really kind of straightens it out. It's just listen to Jesus. You, you have a good time reading. Right. Uh, let's see what else. What else we want to talk about there? Yeah. So what about all the prophets? Verse 24. Have foretold what? All the prophets have foretold yeah, Jesus, or it says explicitly there, these days. These days. Again, all scripture testifies of Jesus, but
But here, Peter says very specifically, all scripture testifies of what they've just experienced not that long ago. Holy Week, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, the resurrection. Jesus. And remember some of that, if you look at Matthew, some of that's pretty incredible. The things that happened after the resurrection. You have people coming out of their tombs and going through the whole through the holy city. That would probably be a memorable experience. <laughs> right. Whatever happened to those people, they died and they went to be with the Lord. Yeah. Like all the ones that Jesus raised. Um, it's, it is a little bit interesting because Matthew's the only one that accounts for that. So. Different people take it different ways as a metaphor. I don't think it's a metaphor, I think it's literal, but it is a metaphor too. <laughs> this is that's what will happen on the last day. Because the tombs will be open and the dead will be raised and they'll go into the holy city. I mean, that's what happens. Alright. Uh, but but uh, Matthew's clear that people saw it, saw these people, so it wasn't just a crazy thing. Alright? Again, yeah, say. <laughs> Dorothy, don't no, push the button. It's not about to be a push. Okay, I know it's right there. I'm going to have to move it. I got it. That's the one that recorded the full part. Kids today are born with that knowledge. They like pushing buttons. They like pushing buttons. Yes, they like pushing buttons. All right, uh, let's see. One more thing. Let's see what we're going to do. Oh, yeah. We're told these days. Peter called. Then here's where it gets really interesting. Oh, maybe it's all interesting to you. Look at 25. You are what? Sons of the prophets. Sons of the prophets. What, is, what does that mean? I'm going to tempt You are sons of the prophets. What does that mean? Just say words. It doesn't matter. Best guess. They were raised and taught by the prophets. Correct. Yeah, that's good. They've been waiting for what the prophets foretold, right? They've been living their whole life in expectation of, of the Messiah who is to come, as the prophets foretold, right? And then, you know, living under that covenant, right? The promise made with our fathers by Abraham. And then, what does Peter say? Verse 26, to you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, there is servant again, sent him to bless you and turning every away every one of you from your enemies. Right? You've been waiting, you've been looking, you've been hoping for, you've been expecting that promise made to Abraham to be fulfilled, and now it's been fulfilled. Right? Uh, this is one of the hardest conversations to have, of course, is that uh, she can reach that can't she? So <laughs> um, Yeah, I need to go along with her. The, uh, what was I saying? Oh! This is the hardest thing for us to talk about when it comes to the relationship, our relationship to, say, Jews who have denied Jesus as the Messiah. Because, you know, we've got a culture now where you can't speak ill of the Jews in any way without being called an anti Semite, right? Mm -hmm. So any kind of criticism of, of Jews is anti Semitism. Which, in one sense, I understand that. No, no. In one sense, I understand that, right? I mean, um, you have to think of these things horizontally and vertically. So as, as as much as we live next to each other as neighbors, of course we don't speak ill of our neighbors. We could have Sikh neighbors, we could have, oh, let's see, in this county, there's a fair amount of, um, not Burma, but, what's that? Mung, yeah, Mung. There's quite a few Mung. Um, there were a lot in Fort Wayne, too. It's another one of those places that, when you do INS, you, you have to you have to have a sponsor. Mm -hmm. So you have families end up bringing more family members over, and they all settle in the same area. Mm -hmm. You have to put some. When you apply, you have to actually put a place down. So and you have to have a sponsor. So anyway, mom, right? Yeah, mom members. Even if they do not, they're of course they're Buddhist, right? That's fine. Right, horizontally. But at the same time, we have to say, having denied their savior, they're damned. Like, well, that's any semi. Well, is it? Because I would say the same thing about my Gentile neighbor who denies Jesus as Savior, right? Yeah. Um, but that isn't that isn't where our, that isn't where we stop speaking. And that this is the key as Christians. Like, it's not where we stop speaking as Christians. We always have to say the next thing, right? Yes, you've denied the Holy One, 
you can kill him, but right, he still loves you. His forgiveness is still yours. Believe, repent, and believe the gospel, just like this. Right? So this is where I understand some people get really frustrated. Like you keep telling someone, come on, come to church with me. It's good. There's good news. It's good for you. And they keep saying no, no, no. They don't like one, and you just give up. Right? And this is half. This happened to Luther and the Jews. And he was just frustrated and gave up. Uh, which I'm sympathetic to. But Jesus never gives up. Right? Even if, even if we do. So it's not any semi to say that um, vertically before God. You know the prophecies. Jesus fulfilled the prophecies. Let me demonstrate it to you. Let's read the Gospel account. Let's read, let's read the preaching from the apostles as they interpret that Gospel account as being the fulfillment of all that he's been waiting for. Right? If they still say no, it's up to God, right? right? That doesn't mean you say you can't be my neighbor anymore, or I don't love you, or I'm going to hurt you, or... Right? So, so I guess that's what we have to make a distinction. Um, but we live in a world today where you can't criticize someone, especially... Their religious convictions. Right? Which puts us in a Unless they're Christian. Well, Christians can, unless they're Christian. It's not, it's not a one way street. I get it. It's not, it is a one way street. It's not a street. You can insult. That's fine, right? There's all because unlike every other faith, um, there's an Orthodox Christian. And so you can't you can't criticize. They say. By criticizing what I firmly hold as my belief, you're criticizing me Externally to you comes outside into you, which also means it's the only one that can be verified. It has any verifiability to it because it's also it's historical, right? So you can actually evaluate the history and see if it actually happened. So people can tell you for believing that Jesus died for your sins, and there's nothing you can do about that. But you can say, but let me tell you who Jesus was. And he was a real guy, and you don't believe me. Even the Romans and the Jews believe that he was a real guy. There, it's, he's in their histories. And they even believe that the period rose from the dead. So let's go with that. And let's talk about that. It's like, well, we don't even know who Muhammad was. No, we don't, except for he married a nine year old. <laughs> when he was like 54. Uh, yeah, Islam has a problem with pedophilia, by the way. And it starts with the first puzzle. <laughs> All right, so there you go. So that gives you a little lead-in. Uh, we'll talk more about the prophets next time. We'll look at Isaiah, Micah, Zechariah, Malachi, etc. So is that okay? Sound okay? All right, good. let's go to prayer. Okay. Heavenly Father, you've revealed to us um, in your Son Jesus the fulfillment of all uh, that you foretold by the mouth of the prophets. Uh, we ask that you would enlighten our hearts to see him as we read your prophets. That we would know Jesus um, in an even fuller way by reading those prophets. We ask this work by your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for staying around. Thanks for a long morning.